and uh, look at some of the earnings plays that are coming out uh, this week. Um, in these slides, uh, Jim Graham here in the office actually uh, did, has done back testing so far this uh, this year with uh, this earnings with the earnings module. So, uh, and basically, you know, we haven't done this in the past where you're actually putting on every single trade. Okay, so um, it's a lot of trades to put on. It's a lot of work to do it. So uh, these are kind of the results that uh, that Jim has come up with. Um, you know, so far, this is kind of through last uh, um, through last week, and you know, it's uh, done done really really well. Okay, um, looks like it's done a, right around ninety percent so far. If you were to put on all the uh, ninety six percent so far, if you were to have done all these trades, and he even broke it down into categories on how well they've done. So these are the, and this is kind of a unique season. We were actually questioning whether it would be a good idea to do it or not, just because of the way volatility has been so far this year. But um, it's actually done really well. So uh, the E primes, these are the prime movers. These are the ones where you're putting a straddle on um, in the closest weekly and or or monthly, whatever the closest expiration is, and it's going to move. Uh, significantly in either direction. So the E overs, which are the opposite of the E primes, are the non-movers. Uh, those are where you're putting a calendar on and just trying to capture the uh, volatility crush. So, so far this season, those have been down. Um, and then you have uh, the naked straddles. So basically we have non-movers, things that are not going to move very much. And we have a calendar option, uh, which you can choose in the earnings module. I'll show you that. Um, or which it's less expensive to do a calendar, of course, than it is to do a, a naked straddle. So um, that is available, but the uh, naked straddle has done uh, better, as you can see there. Next, we're going to go to the echoes. Uh, echoes are kind of unique in that what you do is you're going it, to, it's based on the performance of uh, one stock, and then what you would do is watch the performance of that stock during their earnings announcement, and then you're going to put a directional trade um, based on the results from that that company. Um, so basically what you're doing is if that company has announced and then this echo uh, comes out within 18 days of that uh, other company's earnings, you would put a trade on directionally um, biased towards the direction that that, that uh, other company did. Uh, we have an echo uh, coming out today actually and I'll share that with you as well. Um, earnings pairs, uh, one of my favorites is the earnings pairs and runners as well. Uh, the pairs is where you're putting a straddle on an underline. Uh, a good example, this is MasterCard and Visa. So if Visa is coming out with earnings, you would put a straddle on the night before on MasterCard. Um, and you're going to take advantage of the move uh, because, you know, what basically we're saying here is based on historical results that this underline, that second underline is going to move uh, whatever direction the, uh, the one announcing does. So this one's done really well. This is one of my favorites. The reason because it's low risk. Uh, you know, to put a straddle on something that doesn't have any earnings coming out, your biggest risk is a you know a day of theta and uh, commissions uh, in and out. So um, and then runners. Runners is is fantastic. It's a little bit different than the rest of the categories in that you are putting the trade on that day. So basically, if a company comes out with earnings, uh, it jumps uh, or gaps up two percent, five percent, whatever it does. The runners uh, are predicted to gap even further than that or to run in that direction uh, by a certain percentage amount. And you can rank them based on uh, how much of a percentage move they've made after the gap. Uh, and I'll share some of those uh, with you as well. Um, so those are, are, are really cool. Another thing we're looking at recently is we've been you know, considering another category, and that would be um, as far as the pairs go. Um, sometimes we've been actually, instead of doing a straddle the night before, we're actually uh, putting on a, a bullish or bearish play um, on that second stock um, the next day um, instead of going overnight. So basically, you know, Visa pops, we'll wait till the next day and put a call on a MasterCard uh, with anticipation it's going to move in the same direction as, as Visa. So we've had some success with that as well. That might be a, an additional category that uh, Len throws into the algorithm. Okay, so I wanted to share that with you, and, and it's something that people have asked for in the past is how have these 
uh, how what's the performance record for the earnings module? It's just difficult because you know depending on your quality settings, you could have up to you know eighty or ninety trades um, in 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 an earnings season, which is a relatively short period of time. Um, so it, it is a lot of work to uh, to to compile all of that. And you know there's some that you would go into, some that you you wouldn't do. Um, I mean a straddle on 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 Google um, or Amazon is a pretty expensive uh, trade compared to maybe a straddle on Skechers um, or, or you know, much lower price stock. The other thing is too, to try to keep everything even, Jim was trying to, um, and I'll go back to um, some of these a couple slides before here, where you can see how much capital he was he was using um, to do this here. So each trade was place for as close as 5,000 as possible, but if you do a straddle on some of these lower price stocks, uh, you're going to get killed on commission. Um, so he did as best as we could to to get as close as possible to the uh, um, to being able to put every every trade on. Okay. And then this is just kind of the performance results of, of how it's done. It's you know basically you know 67% are winners. You're always going to take some losers or things that don't uh, move uh, gap enough. Uh, with the prime movers, um, or you're going to have those outliers um, of those stocks that were supposed to be non-movers uh, that actually did have some significant announcement that that made them run in a certain direction or not. You know, another thing that you, when you're doing earnings plays, especially during this time of the year, and we've said it over and over again here just in past experience and past earnings seasons, that if you have a big down day uh, in the market in general and um, you know, there was a good earnings announcement. That's really going to affect how much it, it really would have popped, um, and, and vice versa. If it had a a, a bad uh, announcement and the market was really up big that day, it's going to uh, kind of mute the uh, the down move it really would have had. Okay. So uh, a whole lot of nuances that uh, you know you you er, you gain from experience of of uh, just trading all these different plays and and. and being able to watch uh, different strategies and how they would have performed through them. The nice thing about the earnings module, and I'm going to go over to Option View now and share my desktop. Okay, so you should be able to see my Option View now. Let me open the chat so that I can see if you guys are saying anything. Okay, so here's my Option View, and um, let me talk about the the earnings module here um, and then uh, after that we'll, we'll go and look at some trades um, so basically what you would do is you would go to view here at the top left and then you would go to earn, import earnings plays um, uh, the earnings plays uh, is an add-on module to option view and these are the default settings that we have that I have set up here um, you know I had actually put these uh, settings back um, to these default levels because I was going to help Jim out with the uh, the back testing but Oop, let me let me make sure you guys are seeing my desktop here. One second. Can you can you guys see my desktop? Just want to make sure there. If anybody else is having trouble seeing it. Okay, let me uh, go back here. Share sharing your desktop. Let's see. There we go. Okay, want to make sure you guys are seeing my desktop here as I. Uh, Kind of go through the uh, the earnings module here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to assume you guys can see the the desktop here. 
Um, oh, let me go down in the chat and make sure you guys can see it okay. Yeah, see it. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Um, okay, so basically these these are the uh, the default settings for the uh, earnings module here. And what these quality ratings, these minimum quality ratings are, is uh, percentage on average that these uh, have returned uh, on a on a two year basis uh, over the past earnings seasons. So now we've got, uh, so basically this is saying at Prime Movers is that you're looking for something that's going to, on average, return 26% or more. Uh, same thing with the non-movers, earnings pairs, the echoes, okay, and the runners. So this is saying that this stock is going to run 4.5% in either direction. Uh, uh, on average, that's how much it moved over the last two years, up or down after it's gapped, okay. Uh, DVO, this stands for Dollar Volume Options Traded. And it's terms of thousands, so you're looking for at least $120,000 worth of options traded uh, uh, on average daily. Uh, minimum stock price is 20, and minimum number of successes over the past two years. So this is two out of eight. This is kind of low. Usually, a lot of people will like to uh, ramp, uh, kind of ramp that up a little bit, maybe four out of the last eight. So you get at least a 50%. Uh, uh, winning uh, profitable trade. Uh, one of the things that you know will happen is sometimes you'll have a, a big outlier where there was a huge gap in something that made it, it made it qualify for the prime mover list. So that's why whenever you're looking at results, it's always good to take a look at a a, uh, a price chart and uh, really see you know what kind of actions had over the past uh, past two years. Um, so basically, every Monday uh, or at any first day of the week you open Option View, you're prompted to run this report right away, and that's because the algorithm is is run over the weekend and it pulls in uh, new qualified candidates and will remove uh, things that don't that don't qualify anymore. Okay, so let me go ahead and close this, and we will go ahead and I'm going to show you guys this week's um, uh, planner here. Okay. So this is what you're able to take a look at, and basically what it's going to do is it, it pulls everything that comes up from the candidate list and brings it over here, and it tells you what prime movers are in blue, um, or what uh, you know non-movers are, what's a, a runner, okay. So based on on that, and these down here are the tabs that come up with the earnings module, okay, the e primes, e overs, e pairs, and if you hover. It's going to, uh, you know, really tell you what they, um, what they are. Okay, so based on uh, all these things that come up here, uh, let's take a look at the echo that was on our list, and that was uh, Baidu, and it's based on Alibaba's earnings announcement. Okay, so basically the way it came up, and let me show it to you again. Okay, we have. Um, where was my it's not showing up on this one was that the right date Ooh, earnings planner okay so it was showing me um that um baidu is coming out with earnings after the close today and it was based on alibaba's move um it was it's an echo okay so basically what you would do is you could pull up an option change for Baidu, but we're going to pull up a, a Baba price chart here and see that during on the 18th uh, or on its last earnings announcement here, it was a it was a down move. So because of that, you would put on a trade, a bearish trade on Baidu, saying that it would be an echo moving in the same direction. Okay. Now I was actually speaking to Len in the office, and we were looking at, at Baidu, and it's kind of an interesting uh, uh, matrix here. And the reason being is that it's coming out with earnings. Okay. Um, and let me go back here again, take a look at this. Coming out with earnings after the close. Okay. And you can see that you've got really high volatility here, but it looks like there's another event going up down uh, the line here in a in a in a few weeks. Because you've got really high volatility out here, it's actually higher here than it is uh, currently here. So, um, just something interesting that would, that is happening on it. But the other thing that I was looking at when I was taking a look at this earlier was that if we look at an at the money straddle on this right now, just to say it was 
you're expecting a big move. We're going to analyze this. Okay, so this is where the options are pricing the move to be right now. Okay, this highlighted line right here, which is our, our T plus one line tomorrow, the event date. Okay, this is showing where you where our break evens are 6% and 5%, so 147 and 132 uh, would be the break evens right there. Okay, you pull up a price chart, we can see the area that that straddle needs to move to um, in order to be profitable. Okay, so if you look back in time at where Baidu has moved in the past, and you've got you know about twenty dollar moves at least um, over you know the past two years. So uh, looking at that straddle, it looks like the, it it could be poised for a big move. Uh, this earnings season, but the other thing that would concern me is that you'd want to really look at what else, what else is in the news, and I didn't do that, so I didn't go out and say, hey, why is the 18, uh, February 27th expiration contract have higher volatility than these contracts right here, okay? But that's something I always do when I go to do an earnings play is I'll come in and I'll pull up this little earnings button here, and it shows you where the announcements were and how much it moved. Okay, and you can then put on a trade and hit this uh, profit loss button here and be able to see where you need to move to in order for it to be profitable. Okay, so I'm going to clear that one and we'll close this. And then, so basically I wanted to show you, take a look at some of the uh, earnings uh, announcements that are coming out. We have Disney coming out after the market closed today as well. Um, Expedia is the day after. Win was one of our prime movers and is uh, later this week. They've been pushing their announcement date out further and further, or at least the estimates have been going out further and further. So, and then Skechers is also uh, coming out at the market close tomorrow. Um, and Skechers is one of, the, one of our prime movers as well. So let's take a look at Skechers. And let me clear this one out. And so, you know, basically what you'd want to do is you, with our prime movers, is you put one of these uh, trades on. This is a little early. You would actually do this on the afternoon beforehand. Um, and you could then see where it is to, uh, where it needs to move to in order to be profitable. Okay. So these options are pricing a big move. The straddle is pricing a big move. 17 and 16 right now this is as of today so you'd be able to you wait a couple of days before you put this on but basically if you look at this red triangle here this is showing you where the average down move over the past two years has been in sketchers this is the average up move percentage wise and if we look at a price chart we can see where those big down moves are coming from okay so that's where it really took the big hit and why the average move to the downside is so large. Okay, I uh, wanted to show you that one. We can also take a look at Disney. Disney is actually an interesting one because it is coming up as a non-mover and a prime mover so um, you know when we're looking at um, the lower success rate like you're asking for two out of the last had to have had um, uh, uh, good results um, in that so you've got where a calendar may have worked out another instance in um, so, um, and, you know, whenever I'm looking at earnings play also, I'm always looking at where it's going to move to. You know, it always tends to head up. And, and when he's definitely heading down to, to 85 or lower. Okay. So, um, with it, I'm not playing Disney just because with it being a, a conflicting uh, candidate uh, being a non-mover and a prime mover, I'm, I'm going to stay out of that one um, with Disney. Um, Expedia is another one. There's a lot of option activity in uh, Expedia as well. Um, 
let's go ahead and pull up this one and see what Estrada looks like on Expedia. Thing that I really like to kind of look at is the put call volume ratio. You know, I like to kind of look in here, and as it, as it gets closer, Expedia is not for a couple of days. So um, when you do see it, let me look here. Yeah, it's after the market closed tomorrow. So tomorrow you'll probably see some more activity. I really like to come down and I like to see what's today's put call volume ratio. You know, are a lot more people buying calls? Are a lot more people buying puts? Is it pretty even? Um, you know, just, you know, and it's good because you can go in, in time and with the option view and you can look at this stuff in Backtrader and you can really see if there, you know, some underlines may have a little bit of an edge um, by looking at different uh, uh, things like put call ratio or open interest. Okay. So uh, this is actually the move since we just took a look at it a second ago. So let me do a straddle here. And I always like doing this, even if I'm going to do a different type of trade than a straddle, I'll come in here because I just want to throw up something and see where the break-evens are on a straddle, where the market is trying to price this um, to go. And also what the volatility uh, drop is going to make any position look like. Okay. So based on a price chart for this one, this is what the straddle would look like. Okay, so the market's expecting a, a really big move, um, which, you know, I like the uh, straddles that I do to be a little bit closer in. I like them to be a little bit tighter in here. That way, you know, if it does, doesn't have to move so far to do, um, uh, to be a profitable trade. Okay, and then you can see where, how it's done and where the gaps have been. Okay. So let me clear that trade out and close here. I am actually going to pop up the uh, chat window and see if there's some questions. Oh, someone's asking me to uh, to zoom in a bit. Okay. Uh, so let me minimize this one. Um, so that's what we're doing during earnings season. I mean, uh, we're in the office here trading all the time, and we love earnings season. It's, it's an exciting time for us. But there's some other things that we do as well, and it's just because – you know, we came out with this uh, this horizontal modeling, and let me let me pull up uh, an example of the the horizontal skew that we have. And I'm going to click on the model button here in Expedia. I'm going to click on volatility. And so what we have is we have uh, a horizontal skew model here, where we're actually flattening out the volatility cone. You can see in this shaded beige region here is the uh, volatility cone, um, and it's a three-year cone. And basically, you know, four times a year, this thing gets to the top of this cone, and then it'll drop off, and then, you know, slowly increase as you get closer to earnings season again. Um, and, you know, taking advantage of this and uh, is one of the you know, one of the reasons Len came out with his uh, uh, earnings module, uh, kind of revolving around this whole concept that you're able to, you know, based on past events and IV levels, we're able to predict where the uh, volatility cone is going to be uh, across the contracts and where it's going to be after the announcement. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, ways that you can you can benefit from this, and uh, I'm going to share with. Uh, Len actually came back and, and said to me today, you're going to share what we, the thing we've been doing recently for a while now, actually. And I, I, I thought it would be a good time to share it. So this is, uh, that was the volatility cone. And I'm going to show you guys a trade that I did yesterday. And I was actually doing a walkthrough with someone that just got the earnings module last week, and I was showing him this. And it is pretty amazing. There's a number of different ways you can do this. And a lot of people always talk about, you know, doing some kind of trades to try to take advantage of the ramp up in volatility, not necessarily going through earnings. Um, but uh, some way, you know, and there's straddles or strangles you can do. Um, and option view with its new modeling is a fantastic tool to be able to take advantage of this because it'll go out and find those for you. Um, I'm going to go into Backtrader just to show you the trade I did yesterday. It might not be the exact trade, but you'll get the gist of it. Um, and that's yesterday, and I'm going to go back to about, let's say, let's say 10. 
a.m. Chicago time here. So this is what we've been doing. Whenever there's earnings season, I'm always doing uh, little trade finders like this to see if there's any opportunities. They pop up um, more often than not. Sometimes you can get them. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes during certain seasons, underlines don't have results. Um, but it's uh, fantastic when they do. So I'm going to go and trade finder works in back trader. So you can go back and test this stuff um, anytime you want to. You don't need the earnings module for this. This is just the modeling and option view. Okay, so I'm going to Tesla. Okay, um, I opened up an options chain for it. I'm going to my targets, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the day before earnings, I want to see exactly what the price is right now, at this point in time. Okay, this is what the volatility is now, and I'm the actual event date is the 11th. Okay, so I'm actually looking for which you know. Tomorrow is the last day before the earnings announcement. Uh, I want to see if there's any opportunities out there where I can find a horizontal debit spread beforehand. Okay, um, I'm using 3,000 as a goal. Okay, and so basically there's my target. I'm going to hit go. I want to rank them based on expected return. And like I said, you can do this with straddles. You can do this with diagonals. Um, I would think that. Um, strangles would probably work out better because those out of the monies tend to uh, increase a lot more um, than others do. Um, okay, this is actually, I'm going to go back a little further because this is actually the trade I put on. Okay, I'm going to clear this. I'm going to go back. Uh, let me go back a half an hour. And I'll show you why in a second here. But that 110 was the one I put on. Uh, let me go make sure the matrix is updated here. Let me go back to Trade Finder and let me update these. And I'm going to hit go. Anyways, these expected returns are, are phenomenal. Uh, and that's what we're trying to get to here. So the expected return, basically what Option was telling you, is that within two days, this is the expected return on a $3,000 investment. This is the actual one I put on. Okay. Let me send this trade to the matrix. I actually paid a nickel for this spread. Okay. But let's say I, I didn't. Okay. But let's say I paid. It doesn't matter. Let's say you paid $0.13 cents for it. Uh, I'm going to convert this. Actually, let's analyze it first. Okay. So this is what the trade would look like through earnings. This is what we're trying to capture here. We're trying to capture this ramp up in premium. Um, so basically what's really happening is that option is going, the front month is going to get more expensive, but the back month that you're long on this is going to ramp up a lot more, and which is going to give you the, the, the profit in this trade to make it worth this amount. Okay, so basically what option view is telling you, if the price didn't move in two days, you could potentially return let me go to a yield so you can see this. So it does it can be in whatever dollar terms you want to, but if you look at yield, you're looking at 356% yield. Okay. I put this trade on, got it for a nickel on Monday, and I got out this morning at a 738% return. For real. I was actually on the phone uh, with uh, doing that walk through the earnings module when I took it off and I was so excited I had to share it with them. But basically, so I'm, and we're looking at half an hour snapshots. So we're running through this throughout the day at a certain part in the morning, maybe it was even, you know, a little closer to the open. Um, I was able to get this 110 spread here for, uh, for uh, five cents. Okay. Um, Len in the office has been doing these um, recently as well. Amazon worked out really well. Um, what he was doing, let me go back to Trade Finder and show you the results here. Um, what he was doing is, because sometimes these develop, sometimes they don't. Um, you know, Tesla has been very volatile and has moved down a lot, uh, which may be one of the reasons, but still I was able to get it, uh, this spread for a nickel. And let's go back really quick and I'll show you. Um, We'll go ahead and step through time on this. Let me convert this over. Okay, so let's say it's costing us 3000 to do this trade. I'm going to convert it 
and we're going to go to same time this morning. Okay, so I paid 152 in commissions. That's why it's down that much. Okay. And we'll see what this is worth now. This is real, the real deal, real money here. There is volume here. Okay. There is open interest. Okay. So, I mean, you might not have put on a $3,000 trade here, but regardless, this is what that spread would be worth the next day. Okay, so uh, that's kind of what I wanted to share in, in that uh, the modeling, there's a lot of, it gives you an edge. You can scan for these trades, you can find them. Um, this is uh, probably one of the best example that I've ever had or experience that I've ever had with this before. Uh, on average, you know, you can do uh, when something develops, um, you can do you know, 50%, 60%. Um, we'll go ahead and look at another one real quick here uh, that's coming out. Let me clear this and close this. And let's take a look at, um, Expedia did have some some results. Um, but, and let me go to Trade Finder. And we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna pull up Expedia. Um, I'm gonna look at, these pull in the event date parameters when the bell curve. I'm going to go to the day before. And we'll run this one. So it's based on expected return again. And you're looking at the expected returns here. And it's based on a $3,000 investment. So basically what this is telling you is that the expected return is over 100% on this trade. Now I'm not looking at any commissions or slippage right now. Um, but let me go ahead and send this to the matrix. Okay, it's the 90 right here. So I'm going to analyze this, and what Option was saying is that this spread is should be worth a lot more than it is right now, and it's saying that it's going to be worth a lot more as we get closer to expiration. Again, like I said, this, these things don't always develop like this, but if they halfway develop and do a 30% return or a 50% return by tomorrow, um, it's a fantastic opportunity. If it doesn't work out, you're likely able to get a little bit out of it when you close it. Very rarely you ever get into these trades where they don't develop, where you can't get out um, for a very small profit just because of the uh, the premium that you're going to be, that the volatility is going to be ramping up over the next day. Okay. So I, I'm really excited to share this with uh, with you guys, but this is how we've been using trade finding. We'll be bouncing around different underlines and running trade finder throughout the day to see if anything's any opportunities are out there where the expected return is is phenomenal like that okay I'm going to close that i'm gonna see if there's any questions out there really quick Okay, Mark uh, asked, uh, how did you get the expected drop in IV that you used in Trade Finder? Those are automatically coming in from the horizontal model. Let me show you this again. Let me go into Baidu, and I'll go to Model, and I'll go to Volatility. It's already dropping them right here. Okay, so it's pulling that in because we're uh, um, expecting that, that volatility crush to happen. Okay. So let me go into um, Trade Finder again and see, and just pull in Baidu just to make sure that matches there. Yep, and there it is. So that's where it's pulling it from. It's pulling it from our horizontal skew modeling. Yep. So I know, I mean, it, there's a lot of uh, non-directional traders out there. We like to do a lot of non-directional stuff ourselves here, but earnings season kind of throws a little bit of excitement into the mix. And when you can use, uh, you know, the modeling like Option View provides, it, it really shows you some opportunities uh, that you can take advantage of and, and, and have a lot of fun with it. Um, as you can see, I got that spread for a, a nickel yesterday morning. Um, I didn't do a ton of shares. I wish I would have done more. Um, but it, you can get in some of these plays um, because of the way you can design trades and you don't have to put a ton of capital in. 
Um, for instance, you know, a lot of the expensive uh, underlines, Google's, the Amazon's, even though none of them are as expensive they, like they were a, a month ago, it's still expensive to put straddles on. Um, what we'll do is we'll do diagonals. Um, I'll do I'll buy a condor instead of selling a condor, which is basically a debit spread on either side to take advantage of a move, a less expensive way to to play these without uh, being so exposed. Um, we'll do uh, s uh, strangles instead of straddles, or or you know a number of different calendars, um, those kinds of things. But, you know, Jeff and I are in the office here every day, and we're available for, you know, anybody that wants to do a walkthrough. Um, if you don't have options, you, get, you can have a trial and back test these, these uh, trade finder in our modeling. Um, if you have any questions about the earnings module, um, which uh, gives you, like I said, again, anywhere from 60 to 80 to 90 trade suggestions based on, on your filters, um, you know, that's, uh, I'm going to show you on our, our web page here that you can uh, go to optionview.com and then you click on trading and you can learn all about the earnings module here. Okay, there's some other videos that I've done in the past. Len actually has one on there as well that he's done. And uh, I know I kind of went, went quick there, but I wanted to be concise and, and explain to you how I use Option View, how we use it in the office, and also about the earnings module, which has given us, you know, earnings plays uh, uh, throughout earnings season to, to draw our attention to them to uh, see if there's a, an advantage for us to, uh, to get in. All right, any, any other questions out there? I'm going to go back to the uh, to my slides here. Okay, the uh, number to reach us here at OptionView is 847-816-6610, and we're at OptionView.com. If anybody wants to email me or has any questions, you can reach me at james at OptionView.com. But uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and end the webinar now.